So as you can see, we're here at the Madison County Fairgrounds and there's a ton of hay behind me and more coming in. Now you may not be aware, there's actually been a huge hay shortage this year because we've had a record amount of rainfall. And this actually has implications for both farmers and of course consumers that are just buying beef and milk. We had agriculture agent Brandon Sears tell us all about it. First Trust Bank has a brand new state-of-the-art facility here in Richmond. Stop in and ask about the products and services they offer. First Trust Bank is known for hometown people and hometown service. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender, and MLS number 688-788. It's a little bit unusual. In past years, there's been a, really an excess amount of hay uh, in some situations, but this year uh, it sure is different. We've, uh, we've actually checked from Shelbyville to uh, Mount Sterling, from London to Paris, all across Central Kentucky, and a lot of farmers are really um, you know, keeping back what hay that they have, and a lot of them actually are already running short. I had a I had a hunch that it might be coming, I started getting calls for hay back in October, um, and that's earlier than usual, and so um, initially with all the rain, I, I felt like we'd have a lot of hay produced, but as it turned out, we had so much rain that a lot of hay wasn't able to be baled, so it actually was just lost in the field. Um, anytime we have shortages of feed, um, you know our, our production costs go up, and uh, I do think hay is going to, prices are going to be able to, at a premium this, this winter, um, and so yeah, I do think long term it, it could cause beef prices to go up slightly. I think if we were to have this situation more in the southern plains and out west where the majority of our beef cattle are, I think it would really move the needle a lot more than, you know, for example, if this is localized more to the southeast. For farmers, this is another uh, challenging um, issue that they have to overcome on top of some issues they're already dealing with. We had uh, some cold conditions early and we, we had a lot of grazing uh, in the fall. At least I, I thought we did, then it started turning cold and a lot of our cattle were able to uh, eat through that pretty quickly. And so a lot of guys started feeding hay earlier than they thought they would. And then to compound that, um, we actually had a lot of rainfall, of course, you know, that carried over into the winter. And so we've got a whole lot of mud that we're dealing with too. And so um, it's kind of a triple whammy in a way, mud, low, lower prices at the, at the markets, and then a shortage of hay. Um, it's it's gonna, make it, gonna make it tough. And you know, winter is really kind of just getting started here. So hopefully, um, cold weather doesn't set in, that could, that could cause us to use more hay as well. Um, but it's, um, I think it's going to be a challenging winter, unfortunately. So for farmers that um, may be in a situation where they're not able to get hay or can't afford the prices that the hay is bringing, um, you know, unfortunately they'll probably have to thin down the herd, so sell some cattle off. Um, in some cases we'll probably be able to extend the hay supply a little bit by feeding more corn, and so that will help you know, and some commodity grains. So we, we can help a little bit on that end, but um, worst case, some, some, cows, some cows will have to be sold. Uh, the fear is that we might actually have a drought next year, but I've not seen anything, you know, official on the report. We normally get about 45 inches of rainfall here in, in central Kentucky, and we are ended up somewhere around 72 inches, so well over what we would normally expect. It's, it's unusual to think, you know, we, we, we hate it when it's a drought, of course, um, but there can be some problems when we have too much rain. And, and part of that is um, we've just not been able to get hay up dry enough. And we've really only had three or four periods of time all summer where we could actually cut, rake, and bale hay and get it up dry. And, you know, a, a lot of us, uh, you know, work full or part-time jobs in addition to farming, so that makes it even tougher if we're not right there on the farm to be able to get that done. So um, it, it has been uh, definitely a challenge that way. So like Sears said, they are hoping for drier climates next year, so there won't be another hay shortage like there has been this past year. For WBON-TV, I'm Marissa Hempel.